Hey guys, stay tuned for some reviews from our Ancient Egypt book haul. All right guys, it's about to get fun. We've got a ton of Ancient Egypt goodies to review. So here we have um, where was the Great Pyramids or where are the Great Pyramids? So if you know anything about the Who Was books, they've got who was, where was, when was, uh, what was, they've got a whole bunch of stuff um, on different famous um, landmarks, people, places, objects throughout history. Really great history books, probably for maybe all the way up to middle school. Um, we use these as read-alouds and she gets through them pretty fast as read-alouds and she actually does retain quite a bit. We do have to stop every once in a while and ask her questions to make sure that she's retaining things and we do go back when we know that she's not retaining, she hasn't retained something, she can't answer the question. So we go back and we read it again. So they do take a little bit longer than they might take if you were able to just read it once through. I do like that it came with a little map in here that you can fold out. Um, that is pretty neat. All right, Z, go ahead, tell the people what you think. I love this, and on our next video, I'm gonna give you a hint of where our next video is gonna be. We already talked about him in another book. Oh, all right, so we have two books about this famous person. All right, this is Cleopatra. It's a National Geographic kids book. It is a level three, which is a bit high for my daughter, but we've been using it as a read aloud. And I do think that you can use the, revel the leveled readers as read alouds until your kid is ready, because I think you should really teach to their interest level rather than just teaching to their reading level. Because personally, when I was growing up, I was always bored by what was at my reading level. So I was lucky enough to have an older sister that would read me things that were at my interest level. So, Zelly, you are itching to tell me things about this book. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what you thought about Cleopatra? So Cleopatra is actually one of my favorite Queens? Queens, and there's actually a horrible history about her. Not a Who Was book. Horrible histories. Yeah. And they say that a, a lot about her is death. Death, death. Yeah. They show a lot of dead persons. Like at the start of the movie, they show her getting married to her dad, but he died at the wedding. And then. She's married to her younger brother, and then he dies by a suit of armor. He goes swimming wearing a suit of armor in the battle yeah. and dies. And then she marries another brother. In Rome. And she has another kind of marriage with uh, Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar. Oh, and Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. And then she, she dies. All right. So we really like Cleopatra and we really die, love die. this book. No, Papa, let me. So I die. All right. Thank you guys so much. So this book is called In Search of Tutankhamun, The Discovery of a King's Tomb. So as we've learned, Zelly, was Tutankhamun important? Yes. Why? Because, guess what? People from the tomb and learned a lot about ancient Egypt. But was he even remotely important in his own time? Not really. No, he was a very minor king that didn't rule for very long. Um, his tomb would not have been particularly magnificent compared to other pharaohs' tombs. He was a pretty mediocre ruler, but he's super important because his tomb wasn't robbed. So this is the story of discovering Tutankhamun's tomb 
and all the amazing artifacts inside it. Zelly, you are itching to tell me the next thing, so what you got, babe? Okay, so, so actually he was king at a really young age, around nine or ten. Mm-hmm. Around ten, and he died around 19. Yeah, so he really wasn't king for very long, was he? Yeah. It, but there's even a who was so about him. So that means he's really important to ancient Egypt. You in have to be pretty was, important to get a who was show. In, in that episode, he said, there's a whole lot. Everybody knows a whole lot about Egypt all because of me. All right. Well, that's a little bit about this one. We obviously love it. And we love learning about Tutankhamun. All right, thanks so much. All right, this is Make It Work Ancient Egypt, the hands-on approach to history. Now, this one is a book that my daughter is so excited about. We are filming this video for the second time because she was jumping around like crazy shaking the camera. That's how much she likes this book. It is all really cool crafts and costumes and all stuff that you could pretty much make at home with things you already have. This one, you do need plaster of Paris. So we haven't done this one, even though she's very excited about it. Do you wanna talk about it? Cause I can see your hands going. So I love this book. I love a lot of these. I wish I could have them and I wish I like could put them all together in one. Yeah? Like and, you just would love to have this necklace? Yeah, and, and I would also like to have all the, the stuff that you can actually make, like homes, little homes, like that. Yeah. And I wish I had a chameleon to live in that home. Yeah, it would be really cool to have a chameleon. She's been wanting a pet chameleon for a while. So if you stick around long enough, you might see her get one. Who knows? So you can see it just keeps going. You know, there are... Uh, ooh, it's going into the 50s. So how many pages do we have? 60-some pages of crafts in here. Just really, really neat endless fun you could probably do a whole year just on ancient egypt if you wanted to take the time to do all of these crafts we will not be doing that we will pick a few of our favorites and do them but really really great book who was king, king tet? tet and i gave you zelly gave you a hint in one of the videos that we were going to do another video where we had two books about the same person. So this is Who Was King Tut? Animal mummies. Animal mummies, super cool. People think that they like worshiped cats. Now archeological evidence is showing that they raised them and killed them the second they reached adolescence for a mummy market. So they were more of a high production commercial endeavor than anything else too funny very very cool zelly do you want to tell us anything about the who was king tut book was there anything you really liked about it i love i loved it and that's what when you said the mummy the kitty died i did i like fell to the ground and i landed just in astonishment Oh my because goodness. I, my wish is to have a kitty, but my Abba doesn't like them. Yeah, Abba doesn't like kitty cats, so no kitty cats. All right, so that was Who Was King Tut. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one. Okay, so this one is Pyramid. Um, I don't know if you've seen this series of books, but he has several of them. I think he has like Cathedral and Castle and Pyramid and different architecture books. They are really gorgeous pin illustrations that get just super detailed. 
Um, very much the handiwork of an architect. You can see that it's just lots of straight lines and really gorgeous illustrations. Not a lot of color, so not the most interesting thing for little ones. Maybe when kids are a bit older, they'll be more taken aback by the skill that would have to go in to creating some of these illustrations. But for now, it's a pretty good read aloud. It's a little dense. Um, even if there are a lot of pictures, it's still a really long book. But I think it's beautiful, so it's one I definitely wanted to have on hand. Like, look at that. Look at the light and shadow on that. Just gorgeous. So, really, really beautiful. Even if, right now, it's just for me. So, this is the Usborn Book of Secret Codes. This is, once again, and it's got somebody else's name in it, because I did get this one used. Um, this is not really a curriculum book. Um, this is more of a logic book. Something to pull out when you want just a little bit of something extra. I initially looked at it thinking it was going to be a bunch of like history codes um, to teach them things like that. It really wasn't, but it is a really cool, you know, math, logic, thinking, teach you how to think kind of book. And I don't think we're actually there yet where we'll be using it, but I can definitely see where we will have use for it in the future. So that's an interesting little one for Usborn. All right, so someday someone will be tired of Usborn and it won't be popular anymore, but that day is not today because we all love Usborn, especially in this house. So this is the Usborn Book of World History Dates, the key to events in history. So this is a general reference book. So we don't use it as active curriculum. We don't use it as a read aloud. We pull it out when we wanna know something. We keep it in our um, living room basket. I would call it a morning basket, but we don't use it in the morning. We just kind of use it for when we need something extra, when you know, doing a lesson isn't exactly what's called for at that moment. So it's just a good thing to pull out, pull to a random page, and just learn a little bit of something. All right, Zelly, do you have any thoughts on this book? Yes, and with my hands, I was trying to say, Tove doesn't like anything. Tove doesn't like anything about the book? No, and then no. Okay. Because he doesn't know what it is, and he doesn't know everything. That's right, because he's just a baby. That's a newborn baby. All right, well, this is a good little flip through. You can see how it really is um, very date centric. All the dates are in bold. And you can also see, hopefully from the flip through, how incredibly filled out it is. It's not super um, Western or Euro centric. Um, it does have information from all of the continents. Well, except Antarctica. Um, and it really gives you a good sense of everything. It's a very good reference book, highly recommend. So this is actually one of the very first history books I got that wasn't curriculum. And I got it because my daughter's pretty young and I didn't know how much history she was gonna have a tolerance for, if she was gonna like history, if she was gonna hate history. Um, so I didn't know what we needed. So I got this little cheap book. It was from the Dollar Tree. It was only a dollar, as things from the Dollar Tree tend to be. But it ended up being a really good book. And we have gone back to it several times. All the way to and luckily for us, she does absolutely love history and devours her curriculum and read-alouds and... You know, if she's gonna ask for something first thing in the morning, it's gonna be, can we do history? And the answer is always, no, you gotta do your language arts and math first. 
but she absolutely loves it. You can see even now she's got her fingers in it and she wants to talk about things. So I'm gonna turn it over to her. Zelly, what do you wanna tell us about the book? So I really like it. What, I, what I'm confused about is what is Daniel Fletcher Fletcher? Well, you actually have read this. We talked about how in ancient China, one of the emperors um, didn't like the things that were being written down, so he burned a whole bunch of books. So that's the burning of books, which is really weird to see in a book. So Yeah, like you're burning book in a book. How weird. And it's super weird. All right, well, that's a little bit of a flip through of this Dollar Tree book, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, it has some answers. Bye. All right, so here we have two books from Usborne that I felt kind of go together, and I think maybe they were supposed to, but one is Pharaohs and Pyramids, and the other is Who Built the Pyramids. So let's start off with Pharaohs and Pyramids. So it's got this cool little viewfinder guy in the corner. So let's see what that means. Ah, it's his time helmet. So he's going back in time. And really, you know, it is an Usborne book. Usborne always knocks it out of the park when it comes to their illustrations. They are just fantastic. Zelly, what do you think of the illustrations? I love them. I especially love, like, that they put all the colors. Yeah, it's, it's good to have history books that have lots of color in them because history isn't always the most exciting thing in the world, but when you have lots of beautiful, colorful and, pictures. And now that I see it, it's that Bobby, that money face is so realistic. They always make everything so real like this. And who is that guy? King Tut. Yeah, that's King oh, Tut. and this is the Rosetta Stone. That's right. So you can tell the book is working because she does recognize some things. All right, so that was Pharaohs and Pyramids. And if you hear little noises in the background, that is my baby hanging out. So this one is Who Built the Pyramids. So this is an internet linked book. So there are some links in here every once in a while for you to go get more information. But I just wanna give you a little bit of a flip through. I do think it's probably a companion book. They are kind of similar, but giving you a little bit different information. Oh. Zelly, do you wanna say something? I like how they, so actually these gods aren't real. If you see the gods, they're, they're not, not real. real. We're very big on informing her that the gods, when the, uh, when we're learning about polytheistic religions, these aren't real. That's that's good, Z. Oh, and I make fun of a uh, Greek god and a Roman god, Zeus. Yeah, you have fun making fun of Zeus. There She's got a little Zeus that. figurine from a game that she... Uh, you actually saw the game before. Well, we don't know what videos they're watching in what order, so who knows? All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you love these Usborne books, and I hope you enjoyed the flip through. This is Miss Frizzle's Adventures in Ancient Egypt. So, if you didn't know, Miss Frizzle is a science teacher that goes on wonderful adventures all throughout the year with her class, and in the summer, she gets to go on history adventures. Her class always goes on science adventures. These are history adventures. So there are three parts of this series where Miss Frizzle goes back in time during her summer vacation. And they are fabulous and super rich books. So here it has a full timeline, really cute illustrations. My daughter absolutely loved this. We actually got two so that we could give one to her cousin as well. And she is here with me, so she's going to tell us what she thought of the book as I flip through. Go ahead, Zelly. Okay, so actually, if you didn't know, I actually watch at night a TV series of This Miss Frizzle's Sister. Oh, yeah, The New Adventures. What's it called? Um, Magic School Bus Rides Again. 
by Netflix. We love that. Yeah. And did you know, okay, let's go back a few pages. Because did you know that the actor has a bracelet, a watch that goes back in time? That's like, right. Like when he spins it, so he goes back in time. It's all magic. How do you like the comic book feel to it? I love it. And I really think that <laughs> splitting two groups up are really funny. Because the tour guide is in modern day Egypt and everybody else on the tour is in ancient Egypt with Miss Frizzle. Yeah. And they go on lots of really good adventures. So the next book, Zelly, is about Miss Frizzle in um, the Middle Ages and she goes to a castle, right? And we've read that one too. Yeah, but it was Nora, so we had to give it Well, you have a copy as well. So we got you, we get the girls both things a lot so that they yeah, don't have to and my about cousin. It. So you can see that the next book is about castles because here she's wearing castles. And she had like little earrings and some swords. Yeah, maces and swords. All right, well, that was Miss Frizzle's Ancient Egypt. See you next time. Hey guys, so here we have another book review for you. This is once again in our Ancient Egypt. Um, book box. So here we have Fast Forward Pyramid. I love these because they do have a timeline going down the side that is continuous on every page. So it kind of helps you see where you are in history as you progress through. So this is the history of Egypt. So not just ancient Egypt, it does go all the way to today. Now Zelly has already read this one with us so she is here to give a little bit of her opinion on it as well while i flip through so zelly what did you think about the book while we were reading it i saw it that it's like i saw that like these flips were like stuck together and that showing you the timeline but no it actually flipped through and they're apart yeah, and that's pretty cool, right? I like that. And also, I like how they, like, do the mummy stuff. It's like the, and I like all the beautiful pictures. They are really gorgeous pictures. Yeah, and it looks really realistic. Yeah. And see right here, they're like stealers, and I like Thieves? Thieves. Yeah, and... These are people taking the capstones away from the pyramids, right? Why? Because they were going to go build mosques and city buildings and other things this that they needed. Today in ancient Egypt. Yeah. Well, it's modern Egypt. Modern Egypt. It's not ancient anymore. All right. That's the book. So anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a flip through through this because... The pictures are really just amazing, and they're not wildly expensive books, so I think it's well worth your time and effort to pick one of these up. So something else I really like about these is that they're not just, um, here's a monument that you know, here's a famous figure that you know. They get really in-depth into everyday life. They give you a lot of really good variety. So. Hi. Hi, Zally. So they're just, so here's the erecting of an obelisk. All right, so here is another great little resource. This is a Dover coloring book. I absolutely love these books. We have a few of them now. Um, I actually hate the idea of someone actually coloring in these because they are so beautiful. Um, this one is on ancient Egypt. So you have this beautiful stele of Narmer here, um, and just just gorgeous. Um, so what I do, and yeah, someone did color in this one. What I do is I copy the pages and then I give them out for the coloring. Um, and they have not just beautiful photo or uh, line drawings. Um, and they are really super high quality line drawings, but they also have really great rich text at the bottom. 
So it's not just a coloring book. It is, and sorry, that's my baby in the background who's decided to try to escape. So hold on just a moment. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you really enjoyed all of our great book reviews and that you can use some of these amazing books in your homeschool. Thanks so much. Number two.